The biggest risk factor for dementia is age. Uh, it's a, it's a whacking, it's a huge risk. So it doubles every, the prevalence of dementia doubles every five years after the age of 65. But despite that, there appear to be um, really consistent risk factors found in um, long-term long studies, uh, which are then backed up by other types of studies as well. And they relate a lot to vascular uh, risk. But they also highlight that we, there are protective factors, um, such as education, that although they don't, none of these things uh, produce, <laughs> I think, what people would like, which is eradication of risk, so that you know that you will never develop dementia. Uh, what they do is reduce your risk. So maybe you'll develop it a little bit later, uh, if you uh, had a predisposition to developing dementia at all. So all the things that are happening in the population in the West and in some countries in particular, such as reduction in heart disease and stroke, would be expected to have an impact on uh, the numbers of people with dementia because of their, the risk associations. Should we be approaching individuals in, in the population to say, you do, you do this and that and the other and you'll reduce your risk of dementia? And there is a certain amount of that going on across the world already. Um, from a public health point of view, we know that that's actually quite a limited approach. It tends to um, penetrate the parts of society which are already quite aware. So it increases inequality. That kind of approach has the potential to increase inequalities and disparities in the way that we age and help uh, and um, develop disorders uh, over time. So, um, so again, it's, it's a not investing in only one type of prevention, if you're thinking about primary prevention. We have to think about what are the how can we generate the evidence necessary for societal level interventions, and that might be reducing sugar tax to reduce obesity. It already has happened to some extent with salt. We've reduced our salt intake. Blood pressures are lower. Stroke is lower, and that's at a societal level. We already have seat belts. That's legislation and, and um, legislation for smoking. Those two things reduce head injuries and they reduce. Um, the um, adverse effects on the brain of smoking. Uh, and then there are things that can be done at community level, such as making the environment that people live in more conducive to healthy behaviours. So it's what we call a behavioural environmental change, rather than, you must not smoke, you must not do this, you must not do this, which is relatively limited in its reach.